If you were to fail at everything, what would you do? If you were to fail, like you eliminate the outcome, basically. Purpose equals process, not result, right? Because you can always do more. Yeah. And, and that also will take away, away a bit of this fear um, in terms like your business, because what, what you're saying is like, I'm on my purpose and I'm doing well with the business as long as we are um, accomplishing this or doing this much or not falling back to this. And then you, you're on this yo-yo, like, ah, like that versus, no, purpose is just aligning myself with it. I can always do more. Sometimes it'll be less, but as long as I'm aligned, I'm good to go. So if you were to fail at everything, what would you do? You would never make it. Say your business here, no matter what, you would never succeed. Um, every, you, you'd be enough to survive, right? But you'd never make it big. You'd never succeed. Whatever you tried in life, you had a curse where you'd never succeed. What would you choose to do just for the enjoyment of doing it and not the result of succeeding? So that's a key perspective to sink into. On the flip side, you could say, what would you do if you had all the money in the world? It's impossible to make more. You have it all. What would you do if you had all the approval in the world? Possible to get more. You have it all. Okay, kind of shifts you more towards, you know, process. Another one is, what would you do? Um, I think I mentioned this yesterday. What would you do if your parents passed away? Both your parents are dead. And say, you know, you, you go through the, the grieving, so on and so forth. They're no longer there. How would you live your life? And this might show you again, like how we might just sell out for a parent's approval. <laughs> you just have like a, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's key. It's like, again, not in a sad, morbid way, but just say, if they weren't here, would the direction of what I'm doing and how I live and how I present myself, would it, would it change at all? Right? And, um, and don't self-attack over this. Like a lot of people feel like massive would like, oh, I'd feel so relieved. It doesn't mean like, oh, I'm a bad person. It just means, huh, I'm quite run by this. Interesting. Okay. Um, and then another one is, what would you do if, you know, no one, suddenly no one knew you, no, like you disappeared from the memory of everyone. No one knew you, no one cared about you, and no one expected anything of you. What would you do? Let go of the plan that's been imposed on you, the plan you're trying to live up to. Let go of trying to justify your existence to your parents, your friends, society, to God, to the universe, and start being you. We tend to live our lives in a way to always please others, and that robs us of that authenticity. On a larger scale, it links you to being a people pleaser. It links you to being living in this state, not just in an interaction, but in life, you know? We're taught like, don't think that, you should do this with your life, you should live it this way, you should be interested in this, you should be a serious adult, so on and so forth. And we're like, okay, and we compromise that little voice in the background saying, no, but say this. You're like, shut up, shut up, but do this with your life, shut up, shut up, to the point where, a lot of us have said shut up to that little voice inside for so long that we feel completely disconnected from that voice. And we can't even, like you said, reconnect with it because we've suppressed it so much. If you analyze the different things you do, it's like, are you doing it because you feel inspired to do it or are you doing it to prove yourself, to prove that you're good enough, to become good enough, to impress people, to impress your parents? Is that what you're doing? Because then you're still trying to justify it, justifying your worth. Or are you actually living? Are you coming from a place of, I am worthy, I don't have to justify my life, I'm gonna live and be me. So making that transition and reflecting on that will help big time too, yeah. And then beyond that, it's what do you love? What excites you? A question to reflect on. A lot of us don't have an idea. When's the last time you really felt excited, you really felt passion, you really felt engaged? And ultimately, in terms of the how-to of life, it always boils down to that. What do you love, okay? And how can you do more of what you love? Identify, what do you love? When you feel the most alive, in terms of passion, purpose, it's also on the producing side. Passion is a process, not an outcome. It's the thing where you love doing it no matter the result. I love teaching. I don't care if all of you are here or if just one of you is here. As long as I'm helping someone, I'm engaged with my purpose. In terms of your purpose and passion, there should be nothing that's blocking you from embodying that right now. Sure, there could be blockage in terms of how much of the outcome or how much you, know, you can do or how much resources you have to help you do more. But in terms of locking in, like say you want to coach, be a coach, no, nothing's stopping you from coaching someone right now. Yet we put all the metrics. No, to be a coach, I must have a million followers. And uh, no, as long as you're coaching someone, even for free, you're fucking coaching. That's your passion. And then you use that creativity where it's like, this is what I love on the producing side. How can I 
organize my life so I can do more of that. And it's not in a way where it necessarily means directly making it your job. You know, I was talking to um, Skype clients and he was like, I really love coaching. Uh, he's young though. He's like, but my parents uh, want me to finish university. I want to move out and move into an apartment in the city and just fully focus on coaching. Okay, that was his option. Now what most people will say is, dude, fuck yeah, move out, do you. However, does that give him more of an option to do what he loves? Maybe, but also maybe not. Because think about it, say he moves to that new apartment. Now he's out of his parents' house. His parents are like, okay, we're not gonna support you if you move out. Now he has to find a job. Now he has all the worry and stress in terms of making money and survive and to keep that apartment there. And perhaps all that stress and energy and time spent at a job might take up even more time and might wear him out to the point where when he's home he has no time to embody his passion. Perhaps him staying with his parents and actually going and finishing university unlocks more time for him to do what he loves. But maybe not. The example here is it's not as black and white. Just think what unlocks more time for me to do what I love? How can I do more of what I love? And then just keep reminding yourself you're gonna die. How are you gonna milk your time alive? You're gonna fucking die. You know? I always find it sad but hilarious at the same time when I tell people like, <laughs> when I ask them, would something change in you if you found out today that you had cancer and it was uncurable? If the answer is yes, I find that fucking hilarious. That means you are living the most inauthentic life ever. What the fuck are you doing? If something would change, if literally if a doctor walked in and it's like, you got cancer, you're gonna die. And you're like, oh shit, oh, and, and something changes? Whoa, you're living in a fucking delusion. Because guess what? We all have a disease and we're all gonna die. The disease is gonna kill all of us. That disease is called being alive. It could kill you tomorrow. It could kill you today. It could kill you in a year. It could kill you in 50 years. But there's one fucking guarantee it is gonna kill you. This sounds dark, we're like, oh man, but no, the more you align yourself with reality, the better. This allows you to live an authentic life. Don't live calibrating to life being infinite. Calibrate to life being finite. And now you do things that are authentic. Don't put things off. I'll do it someday. You're gonna fucking die. What if someday never comes? It also takes off a lot of worry. We're like, oh man, fucking, it's like, yo, you're gonna die. Don't waste all that time worrying about this shit. Your time here is very limited. You're, it's gonna go by fast. Milk it, milk every second. Don't take it for granted and don't derp living in a fucking delusion. If you think of life as like a, a video game, which is, in my opinion, one of the best ways of viewing it. Say, say I have a game called GTA 5. I have it right now. Okay, it didn't even come out yet, I have it now. And I hand you the game and I'm like, look, I'm gonna lend you this game for seven days. Seven days, I want it back. Okay, you're gonna take that game and you're probably gonna explore and go like crazy, right? You could think of life that way. You're born, someone gives you the game that is life. Here's the body, here's your ride, but you're gonna return it when you die. Now imagine, you died now, and say we meet in the afterlife. You meet some, a stranger, like, hey, so what did you do with the game for seven days? What did you do with your life? Are you gonna answer that in a way where you're like, oh man, it's crazy, I jumped at opportunities, I went on these crazy adventures, or are you gonna be like, oh, I played it very safe, I had the boring life. That's like saying if you return the game, like, so what did you do with the game? You're like, well, I, um, I, uh, in GTA, I, I did the taxi ride missions, and I collected a lot of money, um, yeah. And that was it, or I just stood still for a bit. It's like, what the fuck, yo? It's like, you have the game, go explore, go milk it. Treat life that way. How can you live your life right now so that when you die, if someone asks you in the afterlife, whether you believe in that or not, like, so, what did you do with your time alive? You have something to say. Learn to fall in love with becoming. Not arriving, but this, this work, and you're always gonna be like in the, the becoming process of it. And then remember too, it's like, back to the video game, right? Is future you gonna have more skills, know more, so on and so forth? Yes. Will future you be a better person in terms of self-worth? No. And that's the thing. Don't go through life trying to justify your existence. Okay, that's what people do. They're born and they're, 
Everything they do in life is trying to prove that they're good enough to be alive, right? Good enough to be a person. Look, I did this, am I good enough? Like to, to the universe, to God, to whatever. No, you're born, you're good enough. You're not here to prove and justify, you're there to live. Don't justify your existence, live and thrive. Okay, yeah. How do, with all that, like, when do you like, say you're not taking action, so, you know, at one point are you like, okay, I should be, you know, like I need to kick my own ass or something to, so that I'm doing so, what I should be. So that I love too. It's like, so technically, if you view it from this standpoint, you're still good enough if you don't take action. No, regardless, remember, it's like character, player. Whether the character succeeds at the missions and levels up or not, you as a player remain uneffective, unaffected. So your self-worth as a human doesn't depend on anything external. That's what I'm saying, this whole like becoming enough, like what you're saying is, I'm only enough every time I take action or when I take action. Or I'm only enough when I think this or this. So it's always that assumption that you're not good enough and it's like this trying to prove, okay? So it's like self-worth. And what you realize is that even self-worth, like none of us are inspired to be idle and do nothing, right? You sit down, it's like you're just inspired to do stuff. And if you just go in this state of embracing, when there's the inspiration to take action, you embrace it and you take action. All these self-help rules, including spiritual rules, are meant to enhance your life and give you, let's just say, uh, a lighter experience, not add more judgment, pressure, and heaviness. And that's what we do. It's like, you might even read something like <laughs> Eckhart Tolle, and it's like, be present. You're like, I'm not present. I need to be present every second. Pro you know, be productive. We gotta be productive every second, and then self-attack. Okay, what about, like, what I would say with self-up rules is, follow them most of the time, but also break them sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes. Be okay to break those rules. So what does that mean if you audit your life and there's never a moment where you slack off and do nothing productive? Start adding that in your life. Add some unproductivity to your life. And be okay with the unproductivity. Because what, what people will do is they'll go say watch a movie and then the entire time instead of enjoying the movie, they're self-attacking saying, I should be doing this instead. And that's the pure waste. It's like pulled in two directions. It's old school dudes. Work hard, play hard. When you work, you fucking lock in and you're there. And when you play, you don't even think about work. You don't even think about productivity. You gotta schedule in some fuck around time. I schedule some fuck around time every day. Okay. Where it's like there's zero productivity, zero point. It's like, and this is, and where you just give yourself full blast permission to just let yourself off the fucking hook. But then on the flip side, when you work though, then it's not time to mix the two. Then it's like, then I'm fucking there, right? You can even read books like the, the famous one that got passed around like Deep Work. Right, you want like deep work immersions then? Chill, versus this combo of the two. And that's what people kind of do. It's like, when they're fucking around, they're thinking about being productive. When they're trying to be productive, they're thinking about fucking around. Yep. <laughs> right? And it's like, okay, you're fucked there. So it's like, it'd be okay. It's fine if you're not productive. It's fine if you slack off at times. Add some humanity to it versus some strictness. Strict living will rob the joy out of life, dude. Then it still feels like there's not enough time to accomplish different goals. So what if you don't? You can always accomplish more. Don't place the finish line in the future. You could die today. Right? There's always more and more and more and more goals. You accomplish one, it unlocks the opportunity to accomplish another one. Um, you can also think of it as like, there is no better future. Um, do you work? Seems like you work out, right? So, <laughs> When I first started getting back into working out, and it's like, it's now a joke, like I have a trainer, we always joke about this. It's like, every time you finish like one thing, so it's like we're doing this one fucking exercise and at the end you're just like, fuck this, I can't wait to finish, right? It's like, you finally do the final rep and you think like, I'm finally done, and it's like, okay, abs. You're like, fuck, because I did all this just to get to fucking abs. And then after abs, okay, now we do this. So there is no better future. It's like you're in this rush, to get somewhere, but just, it's just more of this. And the key is like, hey, just enjoy the moment. Where are you trying to get, right? It's like, did you accomplish one goal? It'll unlock the next goal. It's like, okay, here's now the next one. And, and we would keep rushing and rushing and then we die, you know? Still, by all means, accomplish goals, but don't make that goal like a barrier to your own well-being and happiness, right? It's like, um, 
the same with like people and purpose. It's like, you know, for me to do my purpose, I need this thing to happen. It's like, no, you can align with it now and still go over that thing. Don't rob yourself from aligning with it now. For you, it's like, for me to be happy, I need this thing to happen. No, be happy now and still do that thing. This, these goals that are meant to inspire you or things that are meant to help you with your purpose, let them be things that inspire you and help you. Don't turn them into barriers, right? The classic example is the one that um, um, all the, 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 the online coaches now talk about, right? Where it's like, um, uh, this is the, the new catchy term. It's like, you don't need a big brand to be a coach. And that's true. You don't. Does it help? Fuck yeah. But you don't need it. So what happens is a, a mistake coaches fall into is that they focus on building the brand versus helping people. That's the purpose, the helping people. Does the brand help you help more people? Yes. But they turn this thing that's meant to help them into a barrier. I can't help people until I have the brand. So don't do that here. This thing is meant to help or inspire you. Don't turn them into barriers. That's what you're saying. I can only be happy when I accomplish more. What is more? Endless. 